Howdy y'all, welcome back, thank you for being here. I'd like to share with you today some amazing images of Antwerp, Belgium. Of special interest in my research, I've often wanted to share the vivid history of Belgium, and these newly discovered old world photographs of Antwerp are a perfect place for us to begin. Now, I'm going to dive into the current narrative accepted history briefly, just to give you an overview, but before diving into that, I wanted to give you a few things to look out for in this video. One. Antwerp, as early as the 1500s, is depicted as being a star fort. Not just a star fort, but one of the most vast and intricate star forts that I've come across in my research. The star fort is moated and includes a smaller series of small forts within the larger complex. For centuries, the city of Antwerp was contained within these massive star fort walls, which makes it even more fascinating to understand that directly before the time photography reached Antwerp, the ancient city walls, the star fortification, were told all of it was purposefully torn down in the mid 1800s. All that remains of the ancient walls is one magnificent castle, previously one of many, which surrounded Antwerp, all connected by these walls. It now sits as the last bastion of a time lost. The castle is known today as the rock. Furthermore, we'll have photographs of buildings which appear to have been dug out. When we look at the castle in particular, we will see a distinct discoloration of the lower portion of the castle, although this discoloration is not uniform, as in a rebuild or renovation, but rather appears uneven and in layers, as if the castle was once buried, and the elements exposed on the higher portions led to a change in oxidization of the surface stone. We see this on numerous buildings. We also have a vast trolley system pictured throughout the city. We have many forms of antiquitech, lots of mysterious objects, but very revealing the lack of wiring for all of it. We see light posts, flag poles on the oddest angles, mostly never containing flags. And I'll try to point out all of these things as we go through the video. The photographs and artistic images today were published in the year 1920. However, going through each image, we're told a majority of these photographs are dated to the year 1900 or earlier. The last thing that I'd like you to look out for in this video are the vanilla skies. In the background, of many of the earliest photographs of Antwerp, it appears the skies have been altered. Some instances, it appears clouds were added post haste. In others, it appears we can still see the outline of buildings which have been removed. In some cases, the shadow buildings, as I'll call them, appear to tower over the landscape. So make sure you look in the background and the skyline of all of these images. It's certainly possible this is just an effect of the photography for that time, but it certainly is strange that in many images we can almost make out entire structures hidden behind the clouds and in the shadows. We have the ancient cathedral that we'll get into shortly that sits at the center of the city with an absolutely massive Antiquitech tower, which would make even the most modern skyscrapers shudder. Eventually, it appears Antwerp throughout its timeline experiences a series of teardowns and sieges and rebuilds leading to almost all of the ancient star fort city being gone today. The city appears to have risen or been dug out multiple times. So what is the deal with Antwerp and why? Let's dive into the current narrative and see if it has any clues for us to follow. Antwerp sits on the river Skelt, linking it to the North Sea. The port of Antwerp is the second largest in Europe and is in the top 20 worldwide. Antwerp is considered the world's diamond trade hub and is also known as a Gamma City, being the top tier rank. Antwerp is the largest city in Belgium by area. The city proper has over 500,000 residents, making it the most populous municipality in Belgium, with the greater metropolitan area containing over 1.2 million residents, second in Belgium only to Brussels. Historically, Antwerp has been one of the largest cities in Europe, with a focus on trade at the port. We're told Antwerp was first settled by Romans, with excavations finding the oldest artifacts dated to the 2nd or 3rd century AD. 
However, the area was not first mentioned in the historical record until the 4th century, when the settlement was taken over by Germanic Franks. In the early 7th century, we're told the tribes of Antwerp were evangelized by Saint Amand, one of the most famous saints of France and Belgium. During the Middle Ages, as the intersection of trade, Antwerp was often raided by the Vikings. However, some scholars believe this led to an amalgamation of the population and of the histories of the city. We're told these raids led to the first version of the fortifications of Antwerp credited in most narratives to the Frankish. By the year 879, the Normans had invaded Antwerp. We're told the structure that we see today, the outline of the city, which is just the Hetstein or the castle known as the Rock, was once a mere sliver to a massive star for its city. And we're told this part of the castle dates back to roughly 1220. The entire star fort was said to have been completed somewhat miraculously in five years. This fort was to serve the Dukes of Brabant, now in firm control of Antwerp. The Hetstein, or the Rock, is the oldest surviving building in Antwerp. Interestingly, we have a familiar face. Antwerp became the boundary city of the Holy Roman Empire by the early 900s. By the year 980, Antwerp was considered a margrave of Otto II of the Holy Roman Empire, now serving to face the county of Flanders. Make of this what you will, but one of the most famous crusaders, leader of the First Crusade, Godfrey of Boyant, served originally as the Margrave of Antwerp, a title he held from 1076 through his passing in the year 1100. Godfrey used his power to become Duke of Lower Lorraine, also helping to defeat a Great Saxon, aka Saka, aka Scythian, aka Tartarian, uprising. But most notably, and most revealing in this narrative, while leading the First Crusade, Godfrey of Boyan conquered Jerusalem, becoming the first king of that land. What is coinage called today? Gold, silver, Boyan. What happened during the Pax Tartarica and the Pax Caserica, which we have covered before? Coins, gold, silver, what we refer to as boyan today, was replaced by the first paper money and credit systems, the first true banking systems. One of the largest and most important multicultural groups in Antwerp's history was the Jewish community who viewed Antwerp as a haven for trade and acceptance, tying this back to the times of Godfrey of Boyan conquering the Holy Land. The timeline then appears to fast forward through the Dark Ages, as most narrators do, and the next major item discussed is the immense trade that began in the 1400s. At this point, we're still under the impression that Antwerp, as a fortified city, still stands. The star fort walls still surround the city. From 1500 through 1569, the population of Antwerp was said to have more than doubled. The foreign trade houses of Belgium were transferred from Bruges to Antwerp, and the main building for English merchants in Belgium was also moved to Antwerp during this time. The old world trade routes developed during the Pax Tartarica began to decline as new sea routes opened up more accessibility, leading to Antwerp becoming a major city of trade. By 1504, many considered Antwerp as the trade center of all of the world. The Portuguese specifically fueled this trade. However, by the mid-1500s, we're told every major nation or kingdom of Europe had trade ties to Antwerp. The city was considered a capital for merchants, known in 1531 as a city for merchants of all nations. I begin to wonder if merchant is not a synonym. As we've discussed previously, goods were sent back from the New World to Europe, with Antwerp being the center of sugar trade for all of the world. By 1550, merchant Germans and Italians had flocked to Antwerp, opening the largest sugar refineries in all of the world. By 1570, one out of every 250 citizens of Antwerp was employed as an artist, said to be a much higher percentage than anywhere else in the world. By the mid-1500s, Antwerp was the money-lending capital of Europe, 
which the merchants in the area used to loan the British government the money it needed to operate from 1544 through 1574. During this 30-year period, Antwerp had the most infamous stock exchange in the world. By 1575, Antwerp was the fastest growing city in Europe. Again, I wonder why. We literally have one of the most advanced star forts in the world, one of the largest cathedrals in the world, all surrounded by a moat with the highest number of artists in the world, and a city that appears in old artistic renditions to be already completely built out. Again, the same artists making these depictions literally are living in the city of Antwerp. They're living in the city they're depicting. It's hard to imagine that they're embellishing these images. So what happened? Where did the massive store fort? Where did the antiquitech? Where did everything go? By the late 1500s, according to Luc Normand Tellier, it is estimated that the port of Antwerp was earning the Spanish crown seven times more revenue than the Spanish colonization of America. Now here is where it gets very strange. Antwerp had the massive store forts which made up the city. However, the city did not have a strong army or a long distance fleet. Antwerp was run by an oligarchy of merchant bankers, which was almost entirely foreign controlled. This leniency of trade and lack of trade law enforcement was said to draw large families from Spain and Portugal. American silver imported to Antwerp was a major factor that led to the bankruptcy of Spain. By 1560, Antwerp was the center of world textile trade. It's estimated in multiple sources that in the mid-1500s, Antwerp accounted for an unbelievable 40% of the entire world's trade. This led to, first, the merchant class squeezing out the working class, which second, led to the Portuguese leaving Antwerp. This led to, third, the merchants of Antwerp going bankrupt, which fourth, led to Antwerp's economy severely declining and fifth, Amsterdam becoming the trade hub of Europe. This all led to sixth, the religious reformation, gaining traction in Antwerp, leading to a Dutch revolt against the Spanish, which led to finally seventh, the siege and sacking of Antwerp in 1576. This was the first major destructive event, which seemingly erased large portions of the Storfort city of Antwerp. Antwerp then became the capital of the Dutch Revolt in 1579. Antwerp again experienced growth during this time, known as the Dutch Golden Age. However, the 1648 Treaty of Munster quite literally killed Antwerp's economy. It destroyed the city and it left everything in disrepair. This treaty stipulated that the Skelt River was to be closed entirely, meaning no navigation and no trade. This sounds crazy to say, but this Treaty of Munster was in place all the way until 1863 for over 200 years. It's absolutely ridiculous to imagine the largest trade city in Europe, one of the largest store forts ever on earth, one of the most advanced cities of the old world, a trade capital of the world on a river was quite literally closed off from the rest of the world and basically abandoned, but that's exactly what the narrative tells us. For over 200 years, I find it fascinating that Antwerp was basically closed off to society, for lack of a better term. And this occurred right up until one of the most suspicious portions of our timeline. That is, the history or the period of time in the 1840s, the 1850s, and the 1860s, being the mid-1800s. It seems during this time period, right before the introduction of photography, the earth and all of its kingdoms were reshaped. In 1830, Antwerp was captured by Belgians. The remaining star fort was being occupied by the Dutch forces, leading to the Belgians destroying the remains of the star fort of Antwerp in what became known as the 1832 Siege of Antwerp. Later that year, we're told Brielmont is credited as completely rebuilding the star fort in his own image. Again, we have a name which is given credit here, but it seems more like plausible deniability for any questions we'd have about the earlier fort. 
The narrative tells us explicitly the old world architecture in Starfort was lost, and anything resembling that was more modern and built by Bryomont. But can we trust this? As Bryomont rebuilt the Starfort, the city of Antwerp as a whole was rebuilt, culminating in the 1894 World's Fair, attended by over 3 million people. By this time, it appears the new population was being introduced. By 1903, the first World Gymnastic Championship in history was held in Antwerp. During World War I, Antwerp was the last bastion for Belgian forces before the city and star fort was destroyed during the 11-day Siege of Antwerp. Do you see a pattern developing here yet? Germany then controlled Antwerp until the end of the war. Antwerp hosted the Olympics in 1920 and was then occupied by Germany again in 1940 during World War II. The Germans remained in control of Antwerp through 1944 and during this four-year period, they completely destroyed the port of Antwerp. The Germans intended to completely fill the port with debris from the fort. After the war, Antwerp became one of the main centers for Jewish people. A 10-year plan was implemented for post-war Antwerp, used to rebuild not only the infrastructure of the city, but to replace the ancient star fort with more modern structures. This plan was said to be completed by 1965, and at this point, we have moved into more modern history, so there's very little left for us to discuss. So there it is. That's the history of Antwerp in a very brief nutshell, guided along this roller coaster ride by these elaborate and elusive photographs. Where is the star fort in these images? All that remains is the towering castle, the Hetstein. But what's more towering than one castle? An entire superstructure full of these castle like buildings, connected, surrounded by a moat inside containing the largest trade city in all of Europe. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comment section down below. There's honestly so much to break down just in these photographs, but I would like to hear what you think about the narrative. I just wanted to present this collection of rare images to you in a meaningful way. These are all photographs I have never seen shared before, and I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more old world videos, and I will see you all on the next video. Cheers.